welcome again to another chit chat i hope you're having a beautiful day in today's video we're going to be talking about the things nobody tells you about when getting to medical school when i was about to enter medical school i heard things like oh you should go ahead and do it you know you're brilliant you should do well oh you there's plenty of money in it oh you get respected female doctors are scarce you should do it you should do it now i appreciated that because it encouraged me to go on but i would have also liked to hear about the not so wonderful aspects of it so that i can just get myself prepared i don't think necessarily it would discourage me from going ahead because i was very passionate about it it would have prepared me for the things i eventually saw because when i was getting into medical school i practically just went in you know seeing the profession through rose colored glasses but if i had known about the not so wonderful aspects of it i would have been more prepared for what i was heading to so i decided to do a video to highlight the things that nobody tells you now this is from my own experience it could be different for other people but this is just me speaking from you know what i've learned uh in my own journey this video is not to discourage you or to push you to do whatever it is you don't want to do it's supposed to be like a guide to prepare you for uh this beautiful profession this noble profession that the you're in of time usually they tell you that medicine you'll be spending six years in school but honey most times to spend more than six years it could be because of strike it could be because your school has accreditation problem it could also be because maybe you didn't pass as you should and maybe you had to repeat a class so you should have that in mind the academics may be harder than you imagined i mean i could sit here and tell you oh don't worry medical school is just like oh it's hard but you know once you study you pass the truth of the matter is a lot of people that didn't make it in medical school it wasn't because they were not reading most times it's more than just reading you could actually study you spend the night reading and for some reason you don't pass and if medical school is being graded it's not the way like it's not like many other courses that i know about for example when we have exams we have the written we have the orals right so if you have if you make let's say for example you make 80 over 100 i don't know if that's possible but you make 80 over 100 in your written exam that's your mcq and you, in your theory and then for some reason you don't get the pass mark for your uh we call it oski but it's practicals let me put it that way you can't pass do you understand your practical is even more important than your uh than your written exam you get so that's another thing that could keep you in medical school for very long there are so many books to read there are so many things to know you know and all this has to be done in a very short amount of time you have let's say for example you have like your main specialties you have your pediatrics you have your uh ops and gyne you have surgery you have internal medicine and all of these have lots and lots and lots of test books lots and lots and lots of guide books and all sorts of things that you have to memorize before your exams and you're doing all this within a short time there are so many things there are so many things for you to know that's why it looks as if medical students don't have like a social life because if you have so much to study you know the kind of person you are are you the kind of person that needs to read something maybe twice or three times to have it stored in your brain or are you the kind of person that needs to i doubt if anybody can just read once and pass in medical school i really really doubt i really really doubt you need to study from time to time that's why it looks as if a lot of medical students don't have like a social life you just have to find a way to balance it if you're the type of person that has to read for a long time for you to be able to have all this information in your head and be able to produce it whenever you're asked then you just you know plan your life maybe you might be taking out some time from your hangout or some time from watching movies or some time from sleeping just to make up for your primary reason for being in school like i said all this is doable if anybody is doing it then you can do it all you need to do is just plan but it's also important for you to be aware of this medicine is not a money-making venture hmm. ah you know eh, when i was i used to think that once i became a doctor you know i'll have so much money i'll travel the world i'll live wherever i want to live ha ah, wishful thinking anyways one thing is that as a doctor you will not be hungry you will not beg for food you always 
most times get a job even if it's not exactly what you want or the pay is not as much as you want but you know you always have something to would i say start from or start with right but a lot of times you don't get paid the amount of money you think you make people doctors are not rich in that sense now if you're looking for a career that will make you quick money and when you're thinking about medicine i think you are greatly mistaken medicine will not give you quick money it's not a make rich quick scheme it's a service to humanity a lot of times you see yourself using your own money to take care of your own your patients that's it if it's about money then maybe you should look at another profession being brilliant is not enough oh my god i can't even emphasize this enough a lot of people got into medicine because they they were told that they are brilliant so obviously you're brilliant what uh, what should you do in school you should study medicine or engineering or i guess law it's a prerequisite but it's not enough to sustain you in medical school in fact a lot of times when people are that brilliant they don't even do well from my own experience when i was in uh the university the people that dropped you know before we actually graduated were people that some of them were very brilliant people the reason is because most people who are brilliant believe that all it takes is just read this thing once i'm smart like that like i just read once and i have all the information already no most times the people who do well in medicine are really people who are of average intelligence that are passionate and work hard there are always those set of people in every class that you see studying all the time i used to have a roommate like that and she really inspired me like i could wake up in the middle of the night and see her reading and that's my inspiration i just wake up and start looking for my books to study so those people do better in medical school because they already see themselves as i'm not all that brilliant that means i need to put in the effort and one thing in, that keeps you in medicine is continuous studying you have to read and read until they are encoded in your dna so that's why people who are of average intelligence, who are passionate and work hard, do better than the very intelligent people. Depression is a likely complication of medical school. Hear me out. I'm going to be as honest as possible. Now, I don't want to come to this channel and just lie to you and tell you, oh, everything is all good and smooth. Like I said, these are the things that nobody tells you about. This is not to discourage you. This is to encourage you to be prepared for what is in front of you. There's a saying where I come from that when you are prepared for a battle, that battle will most likely not overwhelm you. Medical school comes with a lot of stress. The anxiety of passing your exams and making sure that you're not kicked out of medical school. The anxiety of making sure that you don't disappoint yourself, your family, your village people, your friends, your well-wishers. The poor sleep that you get because you're trying to prepare for exams reading under unfavorable conditions studying and still not doing well in exams are some of the things that can push you to that uh area that's why it's important for you to make sure that you have the support of your friends and your family it's also important in my own case i had uh religion as one of the things that kept me grounded there are times when i would go to church and after listening to the word of god singing you know thanking god and praying i actually feel renewed i feel like my strength is being renewed medical school will kick you in the butt it will frustrate you it will make you cry there are days when i honestly was like who sent me why didn't i just do something that is not too hectic there are days where i cried there are days where but the thing is medicine is like true love like no matter how many times you fall you want to keep going like and that's what it's about medical school is really expensive it's very very expensive especially if you're in a private university so it's important for you to know that you know money doesn't grow on trees and whoever it is that is paying this money to keep you in school maybe your parents your siblings or your guiding or some family member uh, they are doing that at a cost the best way to appreciate such a person is to make sure that you put in your best you will never stop learning and reading even even when you graduate if you continue to read until you retire no until you die because even when you retire from like public service you might have your own private clinic or 
you might be uh, asked to be a part of some sort of organization or family and friends will still want to contact you for one thing or the other and you have to keep yourself updated how do you keep yourself updated updated by reading so if you don't like to read just run away from medicine and i think run away from law i'm not too sure but i know lawyers read a lot too so if reading is not exactly something that you enjoy doing it will be very frustrating to find yourself in this career because reading is like 80 percent of what you'll be required to be doing in this profession from time to time even as a practicing doctor you still need to read to get there things you need you still need to read to remind yourself of some things and keep yourself updated new things are happening every day things that we didn't when i was in medical school there was nothing like coronavirus today we have coronavirus you know you can't say oh i wasn't taught coronavirus in school so therefore i'm not expected to manage this uh condition no you have to read you have to find out what's going on you have to keep yourself you have to keep yourself updated and it's by reading you do that thank you very much for sticking with me to the end of this video i hope you learned one or two things today and honestly this is not to discourage you from pursuing a career in medicine medicine is a noble profession it is beautiful it is um it is what it's it is rewarding trust me it's one of the best careers you can ever choose in life trust me it is it's one of the best careers you can ever choose in life thank you very much for sticking with me to the end of this video i hope you learned one or two things see you in my next video